this is Chad McRae for update 4 of my new tower defense game. Um, I've improved a lot of logic, added sound effects, and object oriented the entities. And by that, what I meant is I had a lot of copy paste code um, between the monster class and the hero class. And I broke that out into a generic class I'm calling an entity. I was able to remove a lot of the code from the two classes, the hero and the monster, put it into that entity class. What this does is make the code a hundred times more maintainable. And then the monster and hero class still exist, but they only contain methods and properties specific to what type of object they are. Anything that's shared between the two classes goes into the entity class. You can see in the code that I'm copying, pasting, breaking the code left and right and up and down. But I'm actually going to create an object-oriented tutorial video shortly after this one. Like I said, it, it does make the code a lot more maintainable. So I went from 150 lines of code in each class to 25 to 30 lines of code. Granted, the entity class is larger, but it's all self-contained. I only have to make the change once. Now imagine if I kept all of that code in both classes, if I wanted to change the behavior of how the attack function worked, I'd have to make it in both places. Let's say then I forgot to change it in one of the classes, then the two classes behave different. That That's really where the power comes in, is I can make the change one and then see it affect all of the classes that implement that base class. Sound effects, I'm using Open Game Art's uh, RPG sound effect pack. Um, I've got Sword Swishes, a generic wood knock sound for when the skeletons hit the castle part. After all the castle parts are knocked down, as you saw in the beginning, uh, they'll turn around and, and start chasing after our hero. So after breaking it out, I had to do some debugging as, you know, the, the two classes do behave differently. They've got different objectives in mind. Uh, the invaders want to destroy castle part, finding them by tag. The enemies have to constantly search for new enemies in the scene based on their detection range. And so it, it required a lot of back and forth to get it just right. This last part I turned on the mesh renderer for the melee projectile so you can see how it works in relation to the sound. And then for the final product I'll actually uh, disable the mesh renderer again for the melee projectile. And here you can see that after the, all the tower parts have been knocked down, they chase after our hero and kill him. So this is Chad McRae signing out. Thank you for watching. And please hit subscribe if you like what you see.